Welcome everybody. We are going to be looking at iMovie today and going through uh, what you can do with it for creating awesome performance videos. Uh, now there are some restrictions we're going to find and I'll show you those in a minute. Um, but iMovie can still be really powerful. It just depends on, on what you want to do. So I've already got iMovie open here and uh, if you I've already downloaded the clips that we've uh, asked you guys to download and uh, run for your, for your video edit. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my search here. Actually, um, for some reason it isn't, it isn't pulling it up in my downloads this way. So the other way I can do it is go to the Finder. And I've got those here in my downloads folder. So there's... Um, we have a few different things and I downloaded them separately. There's the overhead cam shot. So I'm just going to drag this over and drop it. Okay, and we've got that. Um, we also had the gimbal cam. I'll drag that over. Now I could also group these and drag them over together, but I'm just doing it one by one. And then we have the front facing camera. Now, so there's three video clips here. And then I'm also going to bring in this uh, wave file, which is the audio. And uh, I'm going to use this recording as our master audio for the project. So that'll make sense here in just a minute. So I've got four clips in total. There's three camera angles and my audio. And you can see as I move my mouse over these clips that this is what's called scrubbing. I'm scrubbing across the clip and I can see these different parts of it. So before I get started with any editing, I have to kind of think about what I want to accomplish with this video. I'm going to put my clips down here in this timeline, um, and that's where I'm going to actually make the edits. So the first thing I need to do is I need to get my clips down here and line them up. So I want them to all be lined up so that they synchronize with the audio that we have. Now. Um, this gets into our first big limitation with iMovie, and that is that I cannot do more than two camera angles. Uh, and let me show you just as a quick example. So if I were to take, let's say this is my first camera angle, okay, I drag that in and we can see that came down just fine. I'll grab my second camera angle and you can see I can lay it right on top of the other one. And the way that uh, this works in iMovie and most video editors is whichever clip is on the top, that's what's going to show in our, our viewer. So um, this clip is on top of this uh, other one, the overhead cam. So that's why we can't see uh, that footage. Okay. But here's the limitation. If I try to add a third clip, it doesn't let me. It actually wants to replace the other clip. There's no, uh, so iMovie is limited to two video angles. So that being said, I then need to think about, well, which two angles am I going to do? Now, if you are, I, I'll just say, if you're planning to do more than two camera angles, then I would just say iMovie is not the right tool and you should consider Camtasia or a da DaVinci Resolve or Final Cut Pro. Uh, you know, several others, Filmora, I believe, lets you uh, also do more than two. Um, but just, just keep that in mind that iMovie is only going to work for two camera angles, which for a lot of video projects is, is perfectly fine. But if you're doing something that requires more than that, then go to that. Okay, so the next thing I'm, I'm going to remove these for a second. The next thing I want to figure out is I want to have decide which clip is going to be my my main clip and then which clip is going to be my other clip. Well, this clip, but let's go to, let's look at this one first. This clip is great because it moves around. There's a lot of motion. This is the one where the camera's moving around the piano. So I definitely want to have some of this footage because it's really interesting the way it moves. This clip, um, well, it's it's a steady uh, flat image, but there are times, look at this, where you can see the cameraman walking behind the subject. Well, that's a little bit dis uh, of a problem. 
uh, at some times because I can't use that part of the footage as much as, uh, you know, it would just be distracting. I mean, I could, but it's just something we're trying to avoid if we want to make the video look really professional. So um, this clip is um, not, uh, it, it, it's, um, because it's not steady like that, uh, and, and, and I have to be picky about which parts I use, I might consider using this one instead. Now this overhead view, what's nice about it is it stays consistent the whole time and there is, I think, one little spot where um, we catch the cameraman's foot in the shot, but it's very small. Other than that, this is a, a really good steady shot. So I like to pick a shot when I'm doing multiple camera angles that's kind of like the home base. It's like the, the camera shot that you could always go back to if none of the other shots look good at that spot. So I think we're going to take this clip and we're going to make this our, our main clip. We'll call it our main clip, okay? And we have it there. Okay, great. So um, now you'll notice that my orientation is a portrait here. But if I go to like this clip, you can see the orientation is landscape. And so we might say, well, how are we going to address that? Well, the nice thing is I can just click on my clip here. I can go up here to my tools, and there's lots of different options. We won't be able to cover all of them. There's, you can change the color, you can change the, the balance, the volume, um, you can do speed up and slow down, lots of uh, filters, all kinds of cool things that you can explore with if you want to play with those. But what we're going to be looking at is the, the crop right here. And you'll notice there is a rotate feature. So if I click that, all right, boom, we have rotated our clip. And now it's going to match the same orientation of our other clip. So since I can only have two clips, I have to decide between this one and this one. I like this one better. It's just a lot more interesting. It moves around. So I'm going to have to go with this clip. So I'm going to drag this clip down. And then lastly, I want my audio. This is going to be the main audio that people are going to hear in the video. So I'm going to drag that down. Now I'm going to put this down below the main clip. And uh, I think we are all set. So the next thing I got to do is line up our audio. Um, and what I can see right away is that it looks like the music, if you look at the, the these are called transients. Let me see if I can bring this up a little bit more and zoom this in a little bit more. And uh, Clip size, here we go, I'll make the clip size larger so you can see that, because we have a lot of room on this screen. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to come over here back to the beginning, and um, I'm going to zoom out just a little, and here we can see um, right here in the audio transients that these, this is where the piano starts, okay, and I can, I can just play that a little bit and I can hear it. Now I'm also hearing these other pianos. If I don't, if I want to isolate that, I can pull the volume down on both of these. Oops, grab just the volume. Come on. There we go. And play it. And I can indeed tell that's, yep, that's right where the song starts. Oops. And do those changes because I want to have my volume back. Okay. So I've got to get these all to align. Now, my main clip is this one in the, uh, right here, and it doesn't start, the, the piano part doesn't start till way over here. So I'm going to click here and drag this clip over. Okay, and you can see now, you see the patterns are starting to line up between this clip and this clip. So that's good, that's what I want. You'll also notice there was a point where Aaron clapped in the clip to help us line things up and you can see there's the clap there, there's a clap there. So I still got to bring this over just a little bit and we'll get this fine-tuned in a second. I'm also, I can see here's piano playing down here on the audio. So I'm also going to bring the audio way over and find where that starts which looks to be roughly there. We're, we're not quite lined up. Um, we're getting close though. Okay, so now I'm zoomed out a bit on my clip here. I'll decline that for now. Uh, I'm zoomed out on my clip. 
So what I'm going to do is zoom this in so I can get a better view of my music. I'm going to zoom in even a little more. Okay, I'm zoomed in pretty far and you can see right where that first note starts here, here, and here. So it looks like the high point of this transient, I need to bring it back just a little bit. Uh, now, these clips are not all recorded exactly the same, so I'm going to have to, you know, get it as close as I can. But I, it's looking pretty good here, and I can, I can choose more than one point to try to sync up. Like, I can look here visually and see this lines up pretty well. It's not perfect, but they're not going to be 100% perfect because this audio clip was recorded separately. I might just bring this back just a touch more. And now things are looking pretty close. And if I play right now, if I hit play, we're going to hear all three of these pianos because there's the piano we recorded with this camera, the sound from this camera, and then the pre-recorded sound. It's going to sound a little, um, it's going to sound maybe a little jumbled, but it should sound pretty decent. Let's hear. It's actually not bad. It sounds pretty close. But now that we've got these all lined up, what I can do is turn the volume down on this clip because we don't need to hear that one and turn the volume down on this one because all I need to hear is the pre-recorded piano part. Okay, so now I'll see this camera angle, but I won't hear it. I'm going to hear this and I'm going to see this. Okay, so let's check that out for a second. I think I'll bring that volume up a little bit. It was maybe recorded a little quiet. And you can see how nice that's looking. And it looks, I'm going to zoom this timeline out now a little bit. Let's go to a part where we can see his hands. And you'll see it should look pretty much in sync. So this should make sense, right? Because what we did, oh, let's see, I zoomed out a little too much. What we did is back here at the beginning, we lined up the clips. So once we've lined them up once, they're going to stay in sync all the way to the end of the clip. So now it doesn't matter. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to all line up the rest of the way through. And it's, you can see it lines up really well. So that's really cool. Okay, so um, we've got all of that into place. Now the next thing I'm looking at, let me zoom out just a little bit. Let's see, I'll do a... Now you'll see, um, that's a little too much. Okay, at the end here, this middle clip is a lot longer than the other one. What I can do is I move my mouse over and you'll see it changes. The mouse head changes to this um, different tool and that happens automatically when I bring my, my mouse over here. So I click and I can drag. And I'm just dragging it back here. And what that does is it shortens that extra clip. It makes it shorter than before. I might actually make it just a little longer so that way I can end and maybe do a fade out. Here I'll show you that in, a, in just a little bit. Now the song, you'll notice too, it doesn't actually start till over here. And I've got all this stuff before that. I don't need all that. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to drag this way over here. And same thing here. I'm going to drag this way over because I don't. I just don't need any of that. Okay. Just make sure you don't drag this clip uh, too far or else it starts moving the other clips. And you don't want to move the other clips. So I'm just going to bring this back maybe um, here. Uh, I think I'll drag this in because the piano doesn't actually start let me zoom in a little bit now I'm just trimming that audio I'm just getting my start point and end point to look nice so see oops that was too far so if I move this um, wow that seems to yeah so if I go too far we have this extra point here that's not part of the, the song so I'm gonna bring this back to about here okay so we should have everything still in sync 
Uh, we'll just double check, make sure I didn't accidentally make a mistake there. And I can just skip ahead and make sure everything still looks good. Looks good there. Okay, so here's what's happening. So far up here, all I'm seeing is this angle, and that's because it's on the top. Now, uh, sometimes I want to see the overhead angle. So now it's a, it's a matter of deciding when do I want to see this and when do I want to see this. Um, so all I'm going to do to, to finish editing this is I'm going to choose moments to cut out of this upper, upper uh, window. So this is, Aaron gave the analogy of like a curtain or a window in um, the last class that we had. And what he meant by that is to say, if I, let's say, select this clip, and there's a shortcut, it's Command and the letter B to do a, a snippet. Or you can come up here and say, Edit, uh, or is it, sorry, Modify, excuse me, and say Split Clip, or and that's Command B, you can see right there. If I, if I click this clip, I have to select it first, and then I do Command B, we just made a cut. And what that means is now this clip became two clips. But as long as I just grab this edge and I move this like this, I still have my synchronized points on, on this clip and this clip. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, it means that, let me bring this over a little bit, like to here, where we can get back to that piano again. It means that now... This is all. This has already been in sync because we did that earlier. But even though I'm moving the start point of this clip, it's not changing the synchronized uh, timing, which means it should still line up switching from this clip to this clip. So what we're going to have is we're going to see this clip first. Then it's going to switch to the overhead view for a little while. And then it's going to switch back to this clip and everything's still going to be in sync. Let's just double check that. I'm going to start it here. Yeah, and everything looks great. So, um, and I can choose just by dragging this when I want, how long that, that gap between um, these two clips is going to be. I might want it to be shorter, right? That's kind of a long cut maybe, so maybe I'll say let's make that a little shorter. So that might be it right there where the music breaks. That, that's kind of a cool spot to maybe do a transition. I think I'll bring this over here. And I think at the very beginning, I might bring this back a little bit, uh, maybe just a little bit. All right, let's go to the beginning here. So we're, we see him sit down, he puts his hands up. You know what I think I'll do is I'm going to cut right, right there. So I'm going to select my clip. Command B, and I'm going to drag, I'll see, select this one, and then I'm going to drag it back. So we're going to do the overhead camera just for like a few seconds. So, and then go back to the other angle. Okay, I like a lot of times, you know, a transition like right on the beginning of a measure or something can be a great spot to transition. Uh, it kind of can sometimes help you feel the pulse and the beat a little bit more. Let me double check. Um, yeah. Okay. Good. And then, um, and then we go to this angle and see. All we're doing now is choosing the moments when we want to see this angle and when we want to see this angle. And all you have to do is when you feel like it's a good time as you're editing, when you feel like it's a good time to go back to that overhead view, just select your clip, put, and it's going to split it. I think I forgot to mention this, but this line here that when I click and it moves around, that's called the playhead. Okay. When I do this command B or um, split clip option, it's going to split it at the playhead on the clip that I have selected. You see the yellow 
uh, around the clip, that means I have it selected. If I click this one, now this one has a yellow outline. If I click this one, now this one has a yellow outline. So I'm on this clip is selected and then I hit Command B and there we go. I just split that clip. I can drag this back a little. Oops. That's a different edit I just did there. I got to select this clip first and then do that. You can do this fancy one where you don't select either and uh, it's it's where you you actually move uh, stuff around that way. But we're, we're not going to get into that. Um, and it's usually not that that helpful of an edit anyways. But then you, you choose the moment you want to bring it back. And there you go. Now we've just created another cut. There's no, you know, real, it, it really just comes to personal taste, what you want to do here. Um, with only two camera angles, you probably don't want to switch too much, but you also want to, um, you know, split the clip occasionally and uh, just, just try to make it interesting to watch, okay? Now, there is a spot, I know, where the piano moves fast. Right there, da-da-da-da-da-da-da. I'm going to bring this back because that's a cool spot. I might bring this over just a little bit. So we're going to the overhead. And right here. Now that fast motion of the camera is pretty cool. Now it kind of transitions there again. He's repeating that phrase. Uh, and, and a lot of times when you're repeating a phrase, that's a good time to maybe try a cut. So I'm going to bring this back just a little bit, but it kind of do a shorter cut. Maybe bring this back just a tiny bit. And even you'll find that even just moving it a tiny bit can really change the effect. Now there isn't the most interesting because I, I kind of got the camera got off the piano a bit so I might go I might just uh, I might just cut back really quick you know and and you can again there's not really a right and wrong when it comes to this sometimes sometimes you just have to experiment and try different things might even bring this back just a little this this will be a short a short clip Oh, now there was a spot right there, cameraman's foot, right? So what we can do with this one is do a zoom edit, uh, I think, right there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring the playhead back to this spot. I'm going to select this clip, Command B here, and I'm going to go to the end of this section. So that goes right there. And again, same clip except I want it right uh, right here about. I'm going to split that one as well. So now I've got this, um, this one independent clip. And again, everything's still synchronized because I didn't, I didn't move anything. I just cut it. Okay. So then uh, what I'll do with this one is I'm going to go to my tool here. cropping this right here in a little bit. So we're going to go to this crop option. And this could be kind of cool because it's like, oh, we're coming in on the hands, a little bit tighter, and that kind of thing. Okay. And you can see as soon as I've done that, um, it, it, it brought, when I hit this play button, you'll see it, it cut out all that other stuff, right? So now when I play this from here, it's cropped in. Okay, so I could keep doing these cuts, but I think you get the idea at this point. The, the last little bit is I want to maybe just add a little transition at the beginning and the end. Um, now there's other things you can do here where you can add in all sorts of songs. Um, you can add titles if you want to put a title at the beginning. So I could do something like, um, you know, drop this in at the beginning, 
and say, you know, uh, you know, Aaron Garner, you know, whatever. Uh, there's there's lots and lots to play here. You can extend how long that title is going to show up, and then when I when I play my clip, you'll see that uh, little text thing comes in automatically. And these usually have effects. And if you mouse over it and drag your mouse, you can see what that effect does. So it, it kind of, um, if you watch it over there in the side. So that there's some really cool things like that. That's where you know you can get a little more fancy with um, some of your edits. Uh, backgrounds, uh, that's usually only useful if you're doing like graphics or um, some kind of green screen stuff, but again, that gets way out of the scope of this. But transitions is what I wanted to find, and there's uh, some pretty good ones, but a lot of these can look kind of cheesy. I recommend kind of sticking maybe to like the cross dissolve. Uh, cross blur can sometimes be cool. Cross zoom can sometimes be cool if you use it tastefully. Um, but let's just start, we'll do a cross dissolve here. And what that does is it means that when we start our video, it'll be black, and I'll hit the play here, and it just it just fades in for us, which is really nice. Um, yeah, it's just a, a simple little fade in. And if you click right, I believe, on here, you can you double click it and you can set how long that cross dissolve should be. So that was kind of fast. I, I actually kind of like some of the slow uh, fade ins and stuff. So I'm going to do a three second one. I'll hit apply. And let's see what that looks like. And you can see it's a much smoother, slower fade into the, the video. And then at the end, um, we could do something like that as well. Um, maybe instead I'll use the cross blur. Let's see what that looks like. So I'll put it at the very end of the last clip. And it looks cool. Uh, oops. It looks cool, but again, I think it's too fast. And I'll just double click it. And let's try a really long one. Let's do four seconds. Let's see what that does. It might look weird, but let's see. Okay. The problem I have with that one is that this clip is overlapping here, so it's it's kind of messing it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this clip back a little bit as Aaron's walking away and see if that does a better job. There we go. Very cool. Okay, so that made a nice smooth transition at the end, and we were able to capture him walking off. Um, yeah, that looks great. So there we go. Um, basically, you know, we've we've come in here. We've created a cool transition. We've done our clips. We've cut back and forth uh, these angles quite a bit. We kept everything in sync as we did the whole thing. So basically, we have a fully produced video here. Now this is where, if you want to get fancy with it and say, well, I'd like to adjust the color, you can come in here to the color settings, and you could say, well, I think it's you know needs more red tones, or I want it to be. This is the uh, the color um, intensity, so you could change the whole thing to black and white. Now, if you want to do that, you'll need to come and do it to all the clips, but black and white can be a cool uh, effect. You can make the color temperature hot or cold, so that gives it more orange and red tones. This gives it more blue tones. Um, all sorts of things. The uh, white balance, you can, uh, you know, it has all sorts of settings for that. Uh, skin tone balancer. Um, you could do cutaways, fadeaways, uh, stabilization. If uh, it'll, it'll actually digitally try to stabilize the footage if uh, it was shaky. We don't have that problem here because this camera here didn't move, and this camera was on a gimbal, so it was already pretty smooth footage. You, again, you can play with the audio if you want to turn the the sound all the way up. Like maybe just in general, it's too loud. You can you can make it louder. Um, background noise if there's background noise you can it'll um, do some work on that you can do slow motion or fast motion clips which probably would look strange on a piano video but you've got that option and there's more uh, color filters and everything's here so lots of options for editing um, and and just fine-tuning the clips to make them you know as interesting as you want 
But um, as long as we've got our cuts, our clips, our footage already looks pretty good. The color balance and everything is pretty close between these two angles. Um, so I'm not too worried about that. Uh, basically then, all I have to do is say, okay, I'm, I'm good, I'm done with this, um, and I'm ready to share this with other people. So I can share this as a file, uh, an image, share it on YouTube, share it uh, even as an email. Um, now, I, I would recommend it either going straight to YouTube, or you could do it as a file and then upload it to YouTube or any other place you want to do it. Um, for most purposes, 1080 is going to be really great. Um, the, the footage that we got here was all shot in 1080p, so we're going to stick with that. Um, it's uh, We can say best quality, high quality, whatever you want. If it's going to be going on the web, you know, usually high quality is going to be fine. Um, you know, if you, if you could go with best quality, but just keep in mind, Right here it says 252 megabytes. It's estimating. If I change it to best quality, look what how much that jumped. 1.86 gigabytes. So that's much much larger um, than uh, the 252 megabytes uh, because it's uh, you know a thousand uh, megabytes for one gigabyte. So uh, I think you definitely want to probably stick to either the high quality or even the medium quality. You know is probably still going to be pretty good. Um, it's a minute 39 seconds long. I can change, uh, this is, uh, what was it, Inspector Gadget. So give it a title. Um, and the compression, uh, for compression I think best quality would, would actually be your best option there. So select better quality. Uh, it just means it might take a little longer to export your video, but it, it takes more care to do that. We'll click next. Decide where you want to save it. Um, oh, that's the description. So yeah, I'm going to change this to uh, Inspector Gadget, and I'll save it in Documents and save. And there we go. It's working on my export. There's a little progress circle up here that'll tell us how far we are. It's progressing as it's doing its export, um, and that shouldn't take too long. Maybe depending on your computer, it might take five or six minutes, uh, and you're going to have a fully produced video um, that will come out on your computer. So we'll let that render here for a second, and then we're going to open that up. So just keep in mind that you want to keep a clip that's home, like your home base, and then synchronize everything around that. So that's what I did. I chose this clip as my my main timeline clip and then I linked or, or I, I lined up the audio and the other clip with that one so that way I can just cut away at this one as I please but leave this one as the one that's really kind of um, keeping everything together for me so um, that's I think a really valuable piece anytime you're editing multiple camera angles Look for the one that can be your your home base kind of clip, your uh, your your go to, if you will, in case your other clip has uh, stuff that you can't use in it. Um, that zoom in technique uh, that I used when we saw the cameraman's feet, um, that's another one. Okay, so we've got our movie. It's it's shared. I'm going to click show, and here it is. Open it up. Should open up in. Uh, Oh, I don't want to open it in that program. That's another, this is a another program for video compression. I don't want to use that right now. Let's see, let's open it with uh, QuickTime should open it. And let's just give it a quick little gander. So there's our nice long fade in. And there's our cuts. And that's basically all there is to it. We'll skip ahead. And I probably didn't do the best. Well, I didn't really do a great cut right there at the end. That was kind of a, an awkward spot, but that's okay. And that's where you want to spend a little more time with it and fine tune those cuts, which, uh, you know, normally I would do, but just not in a tutorial. So I hope that was helpful. Um, 
you can send other questions to uh, me or Aaron uh, during the course. Um, you can send them uh, to Aaron Garner at pianomarvel.com uh, or or contact us at pianomarvel.com and um, we'll be happy to help you out. Uh, thanks for watching and have a great day.